it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And we will be miked tomorrow, promise. Meanwhile, we are going to be doing a maintenance. Some of you remember this condo complex in San Diego that we installed about three years ago. We did one maintenance about a year in, but haven't been here for a couple of years. And as you can see, everything is knitted together and filled in beautifully. These Desmediana, these agaves bloomed out. See that? So this whole stand is gonna be dug out of the ground and we are going to take these pups, wash them, clean them up. They've got a little bit of, see that mealy bug right there, a little bit of scale. They just, they just need some TLC, they're fine. But we will reset some of the pups in the place of the mom. You're good. We are, also we've got one over here same thing the gardener cut off the bloom spike but you can see this mom looks terrible now so she's got some beautiful pups that we will reset in her place and you know when it's all said and done we will probably have extra desmedianas look at this Sahara this is this is typically what happens to an echeveria after a few years you know it's not dead but look at the stem this it's so so thick and huge and then this rosette is just getting smaller and smaller there is a little pup right here that you could try to do something with and some more pups coming on the back side of her but I'm gonna get rid of this and put something else in its place we're gonna pick all the detritus out of the rocks reset the rocks and uh, yeah maybe reset some of the plants probably but this is gonna look better than new in no time at all last year this whole street flooded and it took a lot of our lava rock with it exposing the black weed barrier fabric so obviously we're going to be replacing the rock also i mentioned those desmediana the desmediana that had bloomed out well once we got it dug out to separate the pups we noticed a lot of mealy so these are still extremely viable plants, but they're gonna need a lot of cleaning and grooming. I'm gonna be removing all of these dead leaves, and then I am going to hose down the plant really thoroughly, and then I will probably go ahead and apply either a systemic or a spray that is chemical. I will be very, very careful. I will glove up, I will mask up, but again, Remember, I'm only here once every couple of years. So to try an organic approach probably won't be successful. It's my preferred method, but you have to stay on it and reapply very frequently in order to have success typically in an organic fashion. So I will be very careful and nuke just the areas that need nuked. I'm wondering if this looks familiar to you. This is a typical patio. Um, you know, there was uh, some good ideas in play. Let's soften the fence with vines. You know, let's plant some, some easy care shrubs. Let's put some potted plants out. Uh, Shava's got it going on in terms of her stamped, or not stamped, but these, this is a paver patio. This wonderful water feature, these beautiful chairs, but the rest, needs help. You can see uh, it's a hot mess. So what we're gonna do is obviously get rid of all of the extraneous items. I'm bringing in new, really colorful pots. Shava's got a great eye for color and we're gonna really just make this whole area pop with, with really beautiful colors and Talavera. The vines are coming down. They're impossible to maintain. She wants something low profile uh, maintenance wise. And so cactus and succulent, we are going to be installing gutters on the fences and we're gonna be putting flagstones down. We are going to um, be pulling in beautiful pots and I chose plants that are really beautiful but really, really easy to maintain. And then I got some real dramatic top dressing rock to put on the pots. This is gonna be a very exciting little phase of this project. So I spent a minute collecting pots from Planter Paradise. 
in really bold, beautiful colors. This Talavera, I just thought was exceptional. So I pulled other pots that pulled out the colors in that Talavera specifically. That's a trick of the trade. If you want a splash of Talavera, but you don't necessarily want, you know, all Talavera, just get one beautiful one and then pull colors that you see in the pot in your other pots and it'll all work. All of these fantastic oasis plants are for the gutters that Greg is uh, spray painting and installing. And then, because Sh Shava travels a lot and she doesn't want to be, you know, chained to the garden, I chose plants that will give her a lot of beauty but not a lot of work. So most of the stuff that I got are in the Euphorbia family, the Agave family, the Aloe family. I did get this really beautiful Agavoides. I have found, I have one of these in a pot in my backyard. Ew, spider. And it's a champion in a pot. It just sits there and performs year after year with very little effort. And we've got Kevin and Mel working back here. How great is this looking? So fantastic, getting all of this crap up. And also that, that plastic edging, that can be pulled out too. What? Yeah, in worst case scenario, we, we reset it. I get the point of it. Uh, it's to hold these pavers in place, but I don't like how that is so exposed. So we might need to do a reset on that. And what we're gonna do is work on also raking up a lot of this, um, these wood chips and mulch. And we're gonna have to do a little hard rake leveling uh, of the area because we are going to be placing flagstones on either side and I can tell already that it's pretty lumpy bumpy so always remember to do your prep work this job is a lot bigger than it looks but the outcome is going to be well worth the effort and our finished product I'm so happy with how this maintenance turned out now it did take a minute I won't lie the first one we did after a year we were in and out of here very quickly this one took a minute it had been a couple of years there was a lot of detritus um, a lot of the rocks were also covered up by how the plants had had grown so look at how we expose the rocks and really focus on how the ribbons make this design I can't emphasize that enough you plant your plants, you do your mounds, but don't forget your rock ribbons. It takes this from a five to a 10. Um, we talked about yesterday about me bringing some product to treat the mealybug on these plants. This is a chemical. This is not something that you wanna get on your skin or inhale. So if you are going to use a chemical product, and I do recommend organic for your home garden, uh, commercially, like I said, I'm only here once a year or two. I need something that I know is going to work. You want to make sure that you apply the product in the early morning before the wind kicks up too and do not inhale it and do not get it on your skin. But all you have to do is take the, take the insecticide This damn thing doesn't work. Well, you get the idea, right? Spray, 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 hit it, hit it, make till it's dripping wet um, with the product. Okay. Ugh, I have to get some more of this. I haven't used it in so long and whatever. All right. Hey, another really cool tidbit is a little, another little lesson on microclimate. And these aloe dahlii or this aloe dahlii is green and verdant and lush and got a little bit of mealybug too so i'm gonna have to spray that um, but anywho check out its brother over here same plant this side gets a lot more sun and look at how the color is so stressed and the plant isn't quite as full as the one over on the other side. These are both on drip. They are both getting exactly the same amount of water on exactly the same schedule, but they're planted 20 feet apart and look like completely different plants. That is just the most interesting thing. Even 
though these plants are on drip, you know I talk about how my preferred method of irrigation is overhead. Because you know what, if this were getting sprayed off even once a month, I think we could eliminate all of this powdery mildew. Look at that. You know what, and this might not even be disease. This might just be dirt, road dirt, you know? Look at that. Look what I'm doing. I'm just able to wipe that off and expose really pretty flesh on this plant. So if you're able to spray it down with water, you get off all the spider webs, you get off the little bits of aphid or mealybug, and it might eliminate the need to spray at all. Uh, so we'll take care of that today. And I just wanted you to see the finished product of this gorgeous maintenance in the North Park area of San Diego.